SAPRA is evaluating the medical records of 28 people who died after taking the COVID-19 vaccine. 24 of them had taken the Pfizer jab. The authority has received over 3,700 reports of adverse effects. Let's discuss this now with Joe Barnes, who is an epidemi uh, epidemiologist from the University of Stellenbosch. Uh, thank you so much for making time. So we see there are some complaints uh, that have been registered with SAPRA. Some people have been detailing their experiences on social media. Uh, what do you make of the complaints? And should people start getting concerns? Good afternoon. No, I don't think so, because there, there is no vaccine on Earth that doesn't have, uh, in a very small number of people, some kind of adverse events. And the 3,730 reports received by SAPRA, um, uh, if you break that down, mm -hmm. it was 279 events of special interest, which means that they were more serious, and there were 28 fatalities that they are investigating. Now, what I have anecdotally seen from those 28, uh, most of them were in the elderly, That, from what I have seen. Um, one needs to keep in mind that those 28 will now be very deeply investigated with post-mortem investigations and tests and seeing, looking at the medication that they had been taking before and what other comorbidities they suffered from. And I have no doubt in my mind that at least some of those 28 will be declared not re the death not related to the vaccine, which leaves us fewer than 28 out of five and a half million people that have received the vaccine. Yeah, and a million for J and J, yeah. and and four and a half million for for Pfizer. So it is not surprising that there are more Pfizer-related cases because there were more Pfizer-related vaccinations done. Yeah, so, so all vaccines, and people maybe need to understand that, that all vaccines will produce uh, some side effects. What advice do you have for people that are getting jabs and they want to be able to pick up when perhaps there's a side effect that should be of concern and requires medical attention? You will get some discomfort in some in, in some people at the, at the injection site at the arm that, uh, in the arm that has received the injection some soreness and possibly some swelling and a little bit of pain and for the rest of the body most people report something similar to to flu like symptoms body aches and pains and some slight fever and nausea etc if it lasts for anything longer than a couple of days then you should report it if you feel that it's not getting better that it's getting worse or that you are feeling sicker to report it to any vaccination site to any doctor somewhere or any clinic or hospital they are all geared to be able to refer your complaint investigate and refer your complaint to the right authorities for it to be investigated. But that has only happened up to now in 3,730. I do have to add that the death rate, even if all 28 were related to the vaccine, the death rate from getting COVID mm -hmm. is orders of magnitude higher. Yeah, so you, you are more at, at that risk um, of, you, you've, you've got higher chance of dying from, um, from getting uh, COVID-19 than actually um, experiencing some deadly side effects from, from this vaccine. Uh, what do you think is going to be the impact of some of these anecdotal experiences people have shared, even on social media? Um, a lot of people have taken to social media to express uh, their feelings about their loved ones who have passed away after taking vaccines, even though they've not necessarily many of them been able to establish that causal link between the vaccine um, and the death. But there must be some, some, some damage done here in terms of vaccine hesitancy. I mean, vaccines were picking up. A lot more people uh, were welcoming to take vaccines. What impact do you think these experiences that are shared and often without proof have on the vaccination drive and people's ability to just welcome the vaccines and take them? I'm usually concerned about that because as you can understand, we are living in anxious times. Mm. 
it, for more than one reason. And uh, during such times, uh, people are more scared, they're more reluctant to take any chances. I'm really worried about the fact that people will tweet and retweet and send along messages that they've heard of somebody who heard of somebody whose granny passed away uh, after, after receiving the vaccine. And there's no proof, absolutely no proof that it was related to the vaccine. Often the stuff that I have seen was uh, so short after the vaccination that I, unless the person went into some kind of anaphylactic shock, I, I, I doubt very sincerely that it was related to the vaccine. But we'll see out of the 28 how many remain after all the investigations. Yeah. And I can only say that uh, um, that kind of behavior abates a bit, calms down a bit, the more people get vaccinated and those uh, numbers are so few that it is many, many more people died from COVID than mm. died from the vaccine. However, these people who retweet these things keep this fear alive. And our only way out of this pandemic would ultimately the only way out is to vaccinate virtually everybody we can. And so they are they're working against what they are actually fearing yeah. by sending those messages along.